Hello everybody, my name is Madison and this is Madison Esther's Art. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to paint this happy little bulldog on this bright blue background. I'm so excited because today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do some of this detail work in real time, step by step, so that you can paint along with me. So grab a blank 12 by 12 canvas, set up your painting space, and let's get started. Here is Miss Greta herself in our reference photo. Before we put any paint on the canvas, it's always important to take a good look at what we see in our reference. First, I always like to locate the source of the light. In Greta's case, we can tell by the bright areas on the left that the light is coming strongly from Greta's left side, which means that the right side of her face is going to be in shadow. I also want to notice these super bright highlighted areas on the left side of her face and also that Greta's eyes are very round and almost circles. For this painting, I'm going to start with a solid sketch of Greta's face, just because she's not very fluffy and the shapes here are super important. Next, I'll get started with the background by laying in primary blue mixed with a little bit of titanium white. Then I'll take pure titanium white on my brush and brush it into the wet primary blue, leaving streaks and brush strokes behind to give my background energy. I also want to make sure I lay in a layer of titanium white over any graphite since there's so much pencil on this canvas and excess graphite will muddy or show through most paint on top. The layer of white protects the next layers of paint and luckily we can still see through it to our sketch. Next I'm going to be moving on to the folds in Greta's face. For this part I block in base colors that I'm actually going to mix other colors on top of and into. Now I'm laying in the start of darker colors at the base of the folds that I mix and blend outward with my finger. You'll notice that I use my fingers a lot when I paint. I find that a finger is easier to wipe off and get clean as opposed to a brush, so I can get some really effective, really clean blending just by using my hands. Because there are no bristles involved, fingers also leave behind little to no streaks when you move them across the canvas. So, finger painting is actually pretty useful. I'll show you later in the video how to also use your finger to achieve some really unique textures. My next step is to use my finger to lay in a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of titanium white, where the light hits the crest of the folds. I want to make sure that wherever there is a dark area, there's a light area to complement it. If you just have areas of shadow and you don't have areas of highlights, you'll find that your painting looks a lot more flat than if you have both and if both of them play off of each other. Let's speed things up a little as I continue the process of alternating between dark and light, blending them together and diversifying the colors on Greta's face. I've mixed yellow ochre with primary yellow and cadmium medium hue with just a hint of titanium white to create a brighter orangish brownish color that we see in the reference photo where the light is hitting the fur right where we're working. Let's move on to the white fur. Use your finger to put a bit of burnt umber down and then mix titanium white into it, keeping the deepest parts of the fold darker and the crests of the folds bright. While well, it's always important to blend and keep things smooth, you don't want to overblend and risk losing the integrity of the differences between your colors. Next, I'm going to work on the cheeks. First of all, I'm going to lay in a little bit of cadmium medium hue to achieve that pink color right there, and then I'm going to make sure that I notice that the part closer to the nose is darker, while the edges of the cheeks are almost white. Here's where I'll use my finger to create some special texture. By lightly tapping my finger on the canvas, I can achieve lots of tiny dots quickly. I can do this with very little paint on my finger to add paint to the canvas, or I can use a clean finger to tap areas of dark color to remove paint, which will create a very similar texture. I really don't want to overdo this texture though, so I'm going to use a brush to take away some of the texture until I feel like the right amount is left. I want you to notice that I'm also putting down a little bit of primary blue in the top left corner of the cheeks. 
This is because I can tell that sunlight is hitting it and black tends to turn blue in the sunlight. Finally, I'll work on the body, which I'm actually making up because I've changed Greta's pose for the painting. You can see here, she's sitting down and in the reference photo, she's laying down. So I'm imagining where shadows and highlights would fall and painting accordingly, which means that the right side is in shadow and the left is gonna be highlighted. Next, we'll move on to the all important eyes. Painting eyes is actually easier than you might think. It's very formulaic. I like to start with the whites of eyes so that I have something to blend the rest of the paint into. Then I'll determine the base color of the iris from the reference photo, which for Greta seems like burnt umber mixed with a bit of yellow ochre. I'll mix this color and put down a simple flat layer of it in an almost circular shape. You'll notice it's basically a circle with the tops cut off to get this iris started. I tend to start with both eyes at once, and then when I get to the detail areas, I like to do one eye at a time. Next, I'll use a very small brush and some permanent black to darken the edges of the iris as well as the top edge. I put in these shadows because if you think about it, there's actually going to be a lid protruding out over this eye, casting shadows on the iris. In a human eye, these shadows would actually probably be caused by lashes, eyelashes, but for a dog, a lot of times it's that lid. In either case, human or dog eye, the darkening of the top edge and the left and right edges of the iris will make your iris look more round and more real. I'll put in a permanent black pupil, which for Greta is pretty big. Bigger pupils will make for a cuter, happier looking dog, so I'm glad that Greta has these naturally. Next, it is super important to integrate the eye into the surrounding face. An eye isn't just the part we typically think of, which are, you know, the, the pupil, the iris, the whites of the eyes. The eye is actually part of a larger whole that includes lids, folds, creases, wrinkles, highlights, and shadows, all of which are so important to pay attention to. An eye in the middle of an area of flat color will look way less lifelike than an eye that is made to be a part of the surroundings. I'll dab a dot of titanium white for a highlight and move on to the next eye. For this one, we'll speed it up a little. It's the same process. Importantly, I want you to notice that I'm adding a bit of primary yellow mixed with cadmium medium hue tempered by yellow ochre to add an additional brighter color to the iris, which will give the eyes more dimensionality. And there you go. And the mouth is next. For this particular dog mouth, all I'm doing is following the map of color given to me in the reference photo. Think of it as a paint by numbers and lay in color just where you see it appear in the photo. I want you to notice too that in these deep black areas, I'm noticing a bit of shine and a bit of wetness, so I'm going to make sure to lay in highlights there to bring that out. Last step is the nose. I'll start how I start a lot of things by laying in a base, middle of the road color that I'll mix and blend into. One of the darkest areas of a dog's face is its nostrils, so don't be scared to lay in permanent black there. Create roundness by highlighting the protruding left hand areas of the nose where the light would hit and shading the right hand receding areas where the light wouldn't hit. Highlight in circles to give the nose texture. And with a little bit of adjusting that area of white right above her nose, Greta is all done. I had so much fun painting with you guys today. Bulldogs are a blast to paint. I hope y'all had fun too, and I hope that you painted along. If you did, leave me a comment, show me a Greta's. I wanna see all the Greta's. I wanna see how it went for y'all. Tell me about your experience. Tell me all the tea. I also wanna remind y'all of something very important. Greta is part of a series of paintings where half of the money from these sales are being donated directly to the Athens Area Humane Society. 
Together, we have already raised $750 for animals in need. That's a lot of money. To get your very own pet portrait painted by yours truly, shoot me an email, leave me a comment, get in touch, and I would love to paint your pet. And you know what? I might even make a video about how to paint it. I would love to do that. All right, y'all. I had so much fun painting today, and I'll paint with y'all again real soon.